Hi, welcome back to another episode of The Vint Nerd. I'm Steve, and today I'm going to go over this Atari 8-bit SIO breakout board. Uh, it's a kit, so it comes with the board and all the parts for it. And what it's good for is if you don't want to take an SIO cable and cut it in half and connect it to a breadboard and all, uh, you can use this. And the nice thing is it comes with the parts uh, with a voltage regulator to bring the 5.0 volts on the Atari's SIO port down to 3.3 volts uh, and a little LED to show you that uh, everything's working fine there. So it's really nice if you're going to use some external components, a microcontroller, a microcomputer, and you want to drive that fully off the SIO port uh, with 3.3 volts uh, or other devices you might want to use. Uh, so it's a nice device if you're going to play with some components and do some testing. So uh, let's check it out and solder it up. So the first thing I want to show you is how the board goes in the SIO port. And because of the board's thickness or their lack of, currently it's, it's loose. And what we have to do is uh, the pads on the top and the back side, we need to thicken them up with solder so that when we slide it in between the pins, it's got a nice snug fit. So let's get to soldering that. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is get solder on these pads here. Six on the top, seven on the bottom. Again, in order to thicken up the board so it fits between the row of pins on the SIO port. And taking a look at the instructions that they give on the eBay sales site, they suggest a half inch of a 0.8 solder, 0.8 millimeter solder, which I have right here, a half inch melted on each of the top pads and a quarter inch melted on each of the bottom pads. So uh, let me do, cut up six of these. Okay, let's go ahead, let's see how well it does. Just lay them on here and melt them. Trying to get it to melt out evenly here. Okay, not bad. Maybe we'll skip one here just so we don't get too close to the one we just finished. Okay, that that's looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and on the next one. Seems like it should be easier. <laughs> let's try melting it. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Well, I'll learn something new with that. Okay, it's a back side. Well, sorry, front side, top side. Now let's go ahead and cut up some quarter inch ones for the bottom. Now let's try that same technique of just melting it first. Dab it on. Now we're gonna make these a little thinner than the top side. Just going with the seller's suggestion there. Yeah, this technique is definitely faster. So that's not bad, not the prettiest soldering I'd like, but uh, as long as it just makes contacts, that should work and we'll test that out after. So next, let's go ahead and the first thing to do now is to put on the surface mount components, starting with the voltage, 3.3 volt voltage regulator. Get this little package open. Now this is surface mount, won't take much to solder it on. It's a little bit bigger than the regular surface mount things you'd run across, like the uh, LED we're gonna do next. And it should just take a little bit of solder Get the first one soldered and anchor it down to the board. Okay, it's a little crooked, but should be fine. Okay. Nice. Okay, good. 
So that's not bad. Now the next part is this tiny, tiny LED. And according to the manufacturer, you need to uh, make sure, of course, you put the uh, plus positive side and the negative so that it works right. And according to them, on the back side of this is going to be a negative uh, marking. And let's take a look. If you got a magnifying glass or a zoom camera, you can get away with doing this here. And on the back side of this is going to be an LED symbol and the pointy side denotes the negative. And that needs to be soldered onto this side. And so hence the other side's the positive, which is here marked with a positive on the board itself. So let's go ahead and get this open and hopefully not drop it and never see it again. I already don't see it again. There it is, right here. Well, fell out of the package. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, that's pretty, it's nice to see. It's pretty easy to read. Nice green marking. So this pointy side is negative, which right now does match the orientation here on the board. So the trick now is to pick this up, get it on the board without reversing that. Or again, dropping it and never seeing it again. Okay. And I'm going to double check this because I can see there's a green side here. How am I going to double check this? I'm going to press down on it, embed it in my skin, flip it over. Yep. It's still negative on that side. So the green side is also the negative side here. So I don't know if they meant to do that. I hope they did, because that's awesome. Otherwise, it just worked out that way. Try to do this just so gently. Ooh, that could be good enough. So that's good. Let's solder that. Anticipation. Oh, come on. No, let go. Yeah, big ball of solder, that's great. That side's better. So let's get let's get some of this off. Oh, perfect. Okay, let's get the little magnifying fine. Nothing like a five hundred dollar magnifier here, huh? I can't even see that little bit there, but let's clean that up. I'm gonna go with that. That seems like it should work. It's so small, we'll never see that again. Okay, so next, let's go ahead and put on a couple low parts, short parts, and just bend the leads. The nice part is uh, now we're gonna solder on the other side of the board, so we're not gonna go near the surface mount parts we just did. And this should be pretty quick. Gotta love the small size of surface mount parts, but wow, a lot harder to solder. Okay, that should be good. Just cut off these leads. So now we've got a couple of capacitors left and the header pins. And the header pins are shorter, so I'm gonna do these first. So we can have the breadboard holding the header pin here a row of header pins. So now we've got the header pins and put a little spacer here just to hold these straight. So you can see if I go sideways there. So let's just zip, zip, zip those in place. Okay, nice. Now what we can do is we can take this. With this particular breadboard, I can rest these into the one set of pins, pin holes, and this can set in the track just to hold it in place. So now we've got that holding that pretty straight there. 
and get through these. Okay, nice. So looking good so far. Let's straighten this back up. So the last part here are these two capacitors. Now these do matter how you put them in. You can see there on the board, we've got uh, positive and negative. And on these, the longer lead is positive and the jacket here is uh, noted as negative. So we're gonna put that in this way and you push it in all the way. And bend the leads. Not really making this a soldering tutorial, but uh, yeah, good practices. There we go, negative into the negative. Bend those leads. Okay. Cut off these leads and we'll be done. And then we can see how it fits in the SIO port. And if it fits fine, then we can go ahead and uh, test out the power connections. Looking good from here. A little messy right there. Okay. Nice. Okay, we've got the finished board here. And with this Atari 800XL, the same one we used earlier, let's see how well it fits in here. Once we put the solder on those pads on the top and bottom, it should fit much more snugly. Just push it right in. And there we go, it's actually in there pretty good. You can see it's not wiggling at all. Well, if you push hard enough, of course, anything will wiggle, but it's pretty good in there. So let's go ahead. I'm going to hook this up, test it out, but I'm going to use an original Atari 800 computer. One of the 13 pins on here is 12 volts and only the uh, 400 and 800 actually supplied 12 volts on the SIO port. And I want to check uh, not only the 3.3 volt uh, regulator that's on here and the 5 volt, I also want to do the 12 volt and see how that works out. So uh, let's go ahead and get that set up. Okay, we've got the board all set here and the Atari 800. And you can see on the board, I actually went and added a little bit more solder. It wasn't fitting um, as snug as it needed to to make all the connections. It fits pretty good now. You can see how much solder is on those pads there to thicken up the board. So let's just slide this right in here. It goes between the two rows of pins and turn on the Atari. You can see the LED has lit up and uh, I was a little concerned getting that on there, right? Now, what I wanna check is the power output from this board. Now, obviously the SIO port is gonna have five volt and 12 volt on an Atari 400 and 800 and with this regulator on here, it's also going to provide 3.3 volt. And the SIO connector is 13 pins. And you'll notice that this header has 14 pins on it because it's got the extra pin for the 3.3 volts that the board is creating. So let's go ahead and connect this to ground. And first let's check out the five volt pin here. And yep, we're getting five volts. And then the 12 volt pin here. And we're only getting 11.6 volts. Not sure if that uh, is normal for most Atari 800s, but probably enough to drive whatever you need to drive. And then down here is the 3.3 volt that the, this little red board is actually generating. And that's pretty good, 3.3, 3.4 volts. Now, again, this is nice. You can use this breakout board and then connect it directly to a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Pico, some Adreno board, and drive that external microcontroller directly from the Atari. 
Now the Atari is not going to have a lot of power to drive, you know, server, uh, servo controllers, motors, and so forth. But if you're just trying to drive the board and do something, maybe create a MIDI inter interface with the uh, Adreno or whatnot. And the last thing I want to check is the motor control, because that's a fun output on the SIO port. And that's right down here below the five volt. So that's currently off and that's nice because it drives five volts out of there and then you can run a relay, maybe it's LED, you know, whatever. You don't want to draw too much power, but you do have direct control through a uh, poke command and basic. Uh, and obviously any other programming language that you have. And if we poke 54018 and we poke 52 in there, it activates the motor control line on the SIO port. So you can see the five volts we now have on there. So there we have it, a nice little Atari SIO adapter breakout board, however you want to describe it. Uh, you could just, again, use an SIO cable, cut it in half and get access to the wires. Uh, but the nice thing about this is it's got the supporting hardware on it, the electronics for converting to 3.3 volts and make it easy access to tinker around with some projects. So again, it's gonna be fun to hook this up to a microcontroller and see how it goes. Uh, you can find these, well, you prob I found this on eBay. I assume they're still up there. Uh, last I looked, it was going for like $13.50 US and about $3.50 uh, for shipping. So, you know, not bad, 17 bucks to get it, tinker with it and try it out. Uh, and let me know in the comments what you think, if you have one or something like this. I have actually, uh, you can Google online and see other boards. You can make your own boards and you just raise it up uh, with the solder. Uh, but I thought this was nice. It came with all the components with the 3.3 volts. So until next time, thanks.